Um, the theme of today is balance of God's grace and law. Uh, this is a very important uh, teaching and I hope that um, you all learn it well, that this is very important uh, for our Christian life and for uh, training other uh, people. Okay, now I want to say this, that this is something that many um, this is a teaching that many people are confused about, that p many people are putting pressure on people to obey. Uh, they put pressure on themselves to obey. Many people live uh, actually under the law, under pressure. They say that I have to do this, I have to do that. And uh, now I want to obey God. But my motivation is from God's grace. So it's very important um, that we understand the difference. Okay, so uh, I'm waiting. Uh, I'll explain more. That balance of God's grace and law, that uh, this is a very important teaching that we can discern God's help for us. We can, we should discern. God's grace for us, this motivates us to obey the law. The motivation should come from grace, God's grace, to obey God's law. Now, we are not putting down God's law. God's law is very important that we are you know, we, uh, we want to obey God's law, but we are not under pressure. We're not serving God under pressure. This is very important. Um, so we should uh, understand this very well. Okay. okay, it's very important that we understand this. Now, when you're online, please send me a message and say you can see me. Okay, before I'll continue. Um, God bless you all. And I uh, hope that we all will be motivated by God's grace, that we enjoy God's grace, that we are having strength and motivation from God's grace, that we know that God is pleased with us when we obey Him. That we know that uh, when we obey Him, when we love Him, when we pray to Him, He is very, very happy. So this is something that we should all learn to have the motivation from that God's grace that then we obey God's law okay uh, many people's preaching is just saying you you have to do this you should do this uh, now this this is all correct it's all correct to say that uh, we should do it but we should motivate people that we should motivate people with God's grace. It's very important for us to understand the difference between God's grace and law. Okay, God's law and God's grace. What are the difference? Okay. God's law tells us what to do. It tells us what to do. And God's grace tells us what God has done to bless us. Everything that God has done to bless us. That is God's grace. And God's law tells us God's judgment. Now, it first tells us the commandments, but it also tells us the judgment and the punishment. And God's grace tells us God's forgiveness, His help, His blessings, and reward. And God's law uh, motivates people by commandment and punishment. Tell people, you know, if you don't obey, there will be this punishment and consequence. And God's grace motivates us by God's grace and love. That uh, Jesus has given us many promises. God has given us many promises. When we obey Him, He will bless us. He will uh, strengthen us. He will reward us. And so these are God's grace motivating people. And God's law should not be the main motivation. That people should not be saying, I have to obey, I have to obey. They should be saying, 
I'm happy to obey because God is happy that I obey, obey Him. And uh, so that God's grace should be our main motivation. Okay, now first I want to explain God has great love. Now we move on, okay? So God has great love for us. First we understand that God's grace is, um, you know, that it, uh, God's grace gives us motivation and He has great love for us. Now Jesus calls us His children and cares about us. In Matthew 9.22, there was a woman who had nine, uh, 12 years of bleeding. And then she touched Jesus secretly. And then Jesus said, Who touched me? And she was afraid she dared not uh, respond because she was afraid that Jesus would, would uh, blame her. So she was afraid. She, was not, uh, she did not dare to respond. But then um, Jesus said, Someone must have touched me because I feel power coming out from me. And then the woman admitted that she, uh, that she did touch Jesus. And she, ex she thought Jesus would blame him, would blame her. But instead Jesus said here in red, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. She, was, she must be very surprised because Jesus called her daughter. That means Jesus accepts her, accepted her as his daughter, Jesus wants to have a relationship with her as father and daughter and be of good cheer. Jesus cares about her feelings. So he knows that she would be worrying, she would be afraid. And so he said, be of good cheer. Don't worry. I am accepting you. Your faith has made you well. That is not by doing a lot of things. You just trust in me. You just trust and then it will be done for you. And then the woman was made well from that hour. So from this, now we want to look at each passage and find out the nature of God and God's grace behind the Bible verse. And we'll talk about that more later. But here, uh, God's nature is what? That Jesus would see this woman as a daughter. That Jesus has the heart of a father. Jesus has the heart of accepting us. He cares about us. He, in His heart, is not blaming people. He is accepting people. So from this we can see that God's nature is very beautiful. He, is, he accepts us. He cares about us. And He cares about our feeling. He wants, us, he wants us just to trust in Him and then we'll be blessed by Him. Okay? And then God is with us and is blessing us. In Psalm 139 verse 5, You are all around me, in front and in back, and you lay your hand upon me. So here it says that God is all around me. This is the Psalm of David. He said that, God, you are all around me. You are in front of me and behind me, and you lay your hand upon me. So God is... God cares about us. He, God is not far from us. He spends time with us. He spends time staying with us. He stays with us and bless us. God is not far away. So we, uh, we should have the mentality that God is a, a very compassionate God. God is close to us. He wants to spend time with us. So He has this nature of being very personal. He cares about us. He wants to bless us. So this verse tells us that God is with us and He's blessing us. And then God always remembers us. In Isaiah 49, uh, 15, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. So, God says here, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son? Now this would hardly ever happen that a mother would forget her nursing child. Uh, you can ask the woman, the mothers in your church, has any one of them forgotten uh, her nursing child, that the, the child that she is nursing, uh, did she forget the baby somewhere and left the baby somewhere? Now she might have forgotten her umbrella or her, 
uh, 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 something she has brought with her, but would she ever forget her nursing child? No, she would not. Now, even if they may forget, I will not forget you. That's how God is. He remembers us all the time. So God is very close to us. He remembers us all the time. He, he cares about us all the time. He knows our needs. He wants to bless us. So from these verses, we can see that, wow, God is such a caring God. God is a loving God. God cares about us. He is with us all the time. Okay, and then God gave us, gave us His Son and everything. Romans 8, 32, He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also along with Him graciously give us all things? So God has not spared, did not spare His own Son, Jesus Christ, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also along with Jesus Christ graciously give us all things? That Jesus that God give us Jesus, He will also give us all things. So everyone who trusts in Jesus and have a good relationship with Jesus, who will receive all kinds of blessings from God. So uh, now we just talk about a few verses here to let us know that God surely loves us. Okay, now we need to understand the difference between God's grace and law. Okay, and also I will talk about God's nature. His nature is his, his internal quality, okay, uh, so that He will have the grace for us. And so that He will also have the law. The law also comes from His nature. God's nature is He, is, he has love. He is full of love. His love is unconditional. He has holiness. He is very holy. So He cannot just accept anyone into the kingdom of God. The person has to trust in Jesus as his Savior before he can be admitted into God's kingdom, uh, that he has to trust in Jesus for forgiveness. And he is just, that he, his judgment is just, that he will judge us uh, according to our works. He has compassion on us, he cares for people, he has ability to understand all people. He has this ability to understand he accepts all people. He desires to bless people. He wants to bless people. He has ability to transform people. He can change people. And he is prosperous. He has everything he needs to accomplish his needs. Uh, I mean, uh, not his needs, his purposes. In order to ac uh, accomplish his purposes, he has all everything he needs. He owns all the resources and blessings. He owns all the resources and all the blessings. He's almighty. He has all the power, omnipresence. He's present everywhere. He is all knowing. He knows everything. He has foreknowledge. He has knowledge ahead of time what is going to happen. He is perfect in every area. And he has ability to control everything. He owns all authority. He has all authority. He is wise, he is creative, he is selfless. He put down himself to care about us. He, uh, Jesus put down himself to care for us. And even God, he uh, put down his, his almighty, his uh, sovereignty to humbly bless us. That's his selflessness and his self-giving and his ability to plan. He planned the perfect plan for us and He manages everything. So these are His wonderful nature. So uh, we will talk about that when we talk about preaching, that we want to talk about the good qualities of God so that people like God, so that people are motivated by God's nature and His grace. Okay, God's grace. Grace means what God, uh, His blessings to us, what He does to bless us. Okay, so God's grace for us, what God does uh, to accept us, love us, bless us, help us, strengthen us, reward us. So God does everything He can to accept us as His children, accept us as we are. He loves us, uh, He blesses us, He helps us, He strengthens us, he, and He rewards us. So God does a lot of things in order to accept us. He sent His Son to die for us, he 
clothe us with His righteousness. He give us strength. He blesses our life. So God do, does all the things in order to raise us up, to raise up our, our, uh, our, our spiritual life, to raise up our, uh, our holiness. First, it's the holiness from God and, and also the holiness of Christian life that He will build up our holiness, our Christian uh, uh, sanctity, His, um, I mean, not sanctity, sanctification. He builds up our sanctification. Okay, God's grace includes His salvation. He saves us. He loves us. He accepts us. So this is His action. Grace is His action. Nature are, is His quality, His internal quality. His action, He saves us, He loves us, He accepts us. Uh, he, he has a wonderful plan in our lives. Now the quality of God is that He can plan. He can plan, that is His quality. And His action is He, he planned a wonderful plan for our life. He draws us to believe in Him uh, through the work of the Holy Spirit and God's Word. So He, he attracts us. Now, God's quality is His compassion, compassionate. He has compassion on people, okay? And, um, and God's grace is that He draws us to believe in Jesus, okay? He protects us. He prepares wonderful things in all areas of our life to bless us. When we love Him, you know, for those who love Him, God prepared for us things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. So He planned all kinds of things in our life so that we can be blessed by God. He prepares wonderful things in our lives, all areas of our life to bless us. He provides for us. He raises our lives to higher levels. He raised our life to a high level so that we can become wise, so that we can, can become peaceful and joyful and have the ability and the anointing to bless people. He wants to raise up His children and His pastors to become powerful ministers, not just ordinary minister, but to become powerful ministers to help people to trust in God and, and enjoy God and is strengthened by God. He, uh, he trains our lives because we need training. Now, I, my teaching, I thank God for my teachings that, uh, you know, God took a long time to teach me all these teachings. He took a long time that uh, since I became a Christian, He took a long time to train me, to build up my, my uh, ability to teach, teach and train other people and providing opportunities for us to serve Him and bless other people. So He gives us opportunity when we love Him and serve Him. I thank God that He has given me this Global Fire Missions Ministries that I, and then we have people donating that we can help different countries. I've been a missionary to 15 countries and I have been doing uh, li a live broadcast to uh, some African pastors to train the pastors to do better. And I'm doing ministry training in Hong Kong too. So I thank God for the opportunities that he has given me, and He will give you the, uh, those opportunities to choose if you trust in God. Okay, and He remembers our good deeds. Whatever we do for Him, He remembers. And He will reward us. And He will give us heaven, and so on, and many other things, and many, all the blessings. So these are God's grace for us. Okay, God's nature is His inner quality, and God's grace is what He does for us. So uh, let me go through some of this. Um, now, God's inequality is His love. He has love inside Him. And His grace is He loves us. I use an illustration. There are many people in the world who has a lot of love. There are a lot of mothers who have a lot of, lot of love, but they don't necessarily love you. They love their child the children, okay? So they have the quality of love, but they don't necessarily love you. So for God, 
He has this quality of love. That's his nature. And he loves us, each one of us. That is his grace, his action. Okay? So God is powerful. That is by himself. But he also gives us his power so that we can serve him with power. And also God gives us um, the, um, the ability to bless other people. And he strengthens us. He, he gives his power to strengthen us. So that is his blessings, his grace. So I hope you understand this is very important. Actually, uh, you should take notes of some important concepts that he has power, that is his nature, and he gives us power so that we are strengthened, that is his grace. And he gives us power to bless other people, that is his grace. Okay, planning. God has ability to plan, that is his nature. And then God plans wonderful things for us. That is His grace, what He does for us. So nature is what His inner quality and grace is what He does for us. Okay? Uh, so He has ability to change people. And then He changes people. Changes people is His grace. His ability to change people is His nature. He has ability to change people. Okay? So we should all understand the difference between God's nature and grace. Now, if you don't understand anything, you can ask me. Now, here I put down the difference between God's grace and God's law. And God's law, I dis divide into two areas. One is what we do, the commandments. Okay? And then warning. The law also has warning. 